Now I warn you, there may be a little bit of geek speak in this video. Because I've been promising a long time to sort of demonstrate how I use amateur radio, ham radio, in my RV and in our sticks and bricks uh, home in my ham radio shack as it's called. I've been a ham radio operator since I was a teenager, over 50 years, and I still enjoy this hobby because there's so many different things you can do. But it's particularly fun for RVers. So stay with me, I'm gonna show you all the equipment I have in my shack at home, in the RV. I'm gonna show you how I use it, uh, why this is such a fun hobby, and introduce you to some of my ham radio friends along the way. Oh, my apologies. Were you looking for the, the note number? If so, that is 80754. Hey, welcome. Uh, this is what's called uh, my ham radio shack. Amateur radio operators long ago, uh, over a hundred years ago, uh, when they began to set up their equipment, they called it their shack. Probably because a lot of them were living in shacks out and back with their wires and their tubes and their homemade stations. So the phrase has stuck and the base station is now called our shack. In my case, the shack happens to be uh, also where I do our podcasts and where I edit our videos. But these are my uh, uh, ham radio uh, base station or my uh, major gear here. And let me give you a quick um, look at what we have. Uh, over here is my uh, main transmitter. Uh, it is capable of 100 watts of output, a little over 100 watts uh, all by itself. Uh, however, I do have here an amplifier, and that amplifier can boost that, in my case, up to about 500 watts. Um, that will take me all over the world. Actually, 100 watts will take me all over the world. 10 watts will take me all over the world. Uh, this radio is known as an HF radio, and HF stands for high frequency, and it's generally uh, bands that you need to have at least a general class license to operate, and that uh, requires a little more uh, uh, testing than uh, the easier exam for the technicians, but it's not that hard to get. You used to have to know Morse code. Morse code? What do you do with that? Well... I use it. This is my key here. I use it to talk to people. I uh, will call CQ, which is kind of the ham and lango for anybody out there want to talk, and people will come back to me in, uh, in CW, or that's what we call Morse code. It stands for continuous wave. I told you this was going to get a little geeky. And it's a fun mode. I still can do about 20 words a minute on it, which is pretty fast. Uh, and I, I enjoy it. I really enjoy doing my, uh, my Morse code. But there's so many other ways to talk. This is a voice. Uh, obviously, it's my microphone. And with that, I'm able to talk all over the world. Um, depending on which band you use, the band I'm on now, uh, since it's in the evening, this is uh, one of the lower bands. It's the 80-meter band. And I'm generally hearing stations from uh, Florida uh, out to Maine. I'm in Michigan. And from uh, there out to Kansas, Nebraska. So probably within about a six to 800 mile radius. Sometimes late at night when the band really opens up, you can go across the Atlantic Ocean and hear people from there on that band. And then there are higher frequencies, higher bands uh, that will work all over the world. So that's uh, one of the things I do here. There's different ways. There's, you saw Morse code, there's voice. And in our RV, I've run into people doing a lot of digital communications. Uh, I also have a, a low-powered HF radio. And I've shown you that before in some of our videos. Uh, that low-powered radio will uh, put about 10 watts out and I bring it along in the RV. And uh, here is uh, what I did earlier this year at Taquamanon Falls. I put a, a telescoping mast up and ran some wire, tuned it up, and I uh, did it, uh, what's called Parks on the Air. It's kind of like an ongoing contest where you set up in a park and you try and talk to as many amateur radio operators 
as possible in a short period of time. It was pretty cold when I did it, and I think I worked uh, 12 states in about 20 minutes with just that little 10 watt radio. I carry this in our RV, this system, and I can set it up at a campground anywhere. And then there's this radio here. This is my UHF VHF radio. I have two versions of this radio, this one here in my shack, and I have one in the RV. Installing a two-way amateur radio in a transceiver in an RV, well, I think it requires a little bit more uh, neatness uh, perhaps than uh, I am used to. So I've uh, come to Holland Motorhomes in Holland, Michigan and uh, ask uh, Kyle, who's the service tech who works so much on our RV whenever we are adding things, to, uh, to help install it for me. And uh, that's going to be our first thing. Right underneath the hood, we are going to hook it up for power. We're going to get some power, some 12 volt power, to that transceiver. The power feed line right here, black and the red, and then we'll uh, wire up the radio. Right here is the fuse box. Take the cover right off and you can see all your engine fuses right here. This is your power port, power terminal right there that comes directly from the batteries up to this. So simply take that off and run a power wire up underneath the dash and we'll ground it probably up here on the frame and ground it out properly so we have a nice chassis ground with the radio. The next challenge is the antenna which is right here. And uh, that's going to go on the ladder up there. So we'll kind of put that on. And there's times it's going to hit trees and stuff. But I think we'll be good with that because it's on a nice spring. Yeah, it's got yeah, a lot of flight. All right, so we're right about there. And we could have run the antenna wire across the roof, but one of the worries I would have is that the wind would catch it and it would kind of flop up and down. So uh, what Kyle here is doing is this, this whole back section here, that's just basically a shell that is built onto the, uh, the transit. And he's gonna put a slight hole right about there and then we'll drop the antenna wire down and then we will run it all the way underneath the RV, bring it up through the front and uh, into the same place that we're hooking up the power. Nice and neat. Here's the antenna wire coming out, and we're just securing it, zip ties there, so everything's nice and tight. So here is where we mounted the actual transceiver. Under the middle of the dashboard, underneath, far out of the way, we hit a wire that runs from the radio to the control head uh, behind the dash and under the trim. And uh, we fastened the control head with a built-in suction cup mount to the top left of the uh, windshield. So it's right here, it's real easy for me to be able to control. Microphone is mounted right here in the dash, easy to reach with uh, my right hand. Uh, the control head, the radio itself can be controlled with all of these different buttons. It is a push to talk operation. It's pretty handy that way. Again, this is a VHF UHF radio, and it has a range point to point or simplex, as amateur radio operators call it, of about 30 to 50 miles. However, that range is greatly extended to cover entire regions of the country through a network of amateur radio repeaters, which relay those signals. To be licensed to operate as an amateur radio operator on those VHF UHF frequencies requires a technician class license. Now that is the easiest ham radio license to get. Uh, with just a little bit of study, you're able to pass that test and you're able to operate on these frequencies. Now there's one more thing that you can do with that technician class license that I think will blow your mind. Remember back when I was talking to you from my ham radio shack in my home in Michigan, I told you about the digital mode of communications. Well, that is available to technician class licenses. And um, I want to demonstrate just what you can do with that. To do so, I'm going to go inside and, uh, and we'll show you with uh, a little handheld portable radio. 
I'm in Florida at our condo. I do this uh, when I'm in the RV at a campground or when we're boondocking or even uh, back home in Michigan on my back deck or in the front yard. This is a handheld radio all by itself with this little antenna. It can transmit maybe a couple, three miles, maybe a little longer, but not much. But this is the key. This is called an open spot hotspot. And what it does is it interfaces this handheld radio to the internet and vice versa. And when it does that, it allows me to talk to people all over the world using a new technology. In this case, it's called Fusion that uses the internet and amateur radio. And uh, it does its magic up there somehow interfacing it and allows me to reach people everywhere. Now I'll give you a demonstration of it. We're going to uh, put it here in the patio table and let's see who we can find out there to talk to uh, via Fusion and uh, this hotspot. Patio 8 uh, Zulu Arobio Hotel. Uh, I copy 100% uh, from you. No problem whatsoever. Nice audio. Uh, Derek's the name. Delta Echo Romeo Echo Kilo. My QTH is a small town called Bridgewater in the county of Somerset. And that is in the west of England, southwest of England. Uh, G one HLP. You sound very good this morning from uh, from England across the the pond. I am on one of our ponds here in the United States. I'm actually uh, on the Gulf of Mexico uh, in the Panhandle area of Florida. And I'm talking to you from uh, the balcony of our condo here as we look out at the uh, Gulf of Mexico in Florida. So uh, we're uh, enjoying uh, this uh, ham radio. I'm actually I'm going to do a little version of this for a YouTube channel we have, so pretty amazing how uh, with just a little handheld radio we're able to to talk all the way across to uh, to England. SG1 HLP, yeah, all copied like 100% uh, copy and okay uh, on your location there in the Gulf of Mexico. Very, very nice indeed. One of the nice things is you can do a lookup, so this is... Uh, a look up on uh, the station for Derek and there is a picture of Derek and uh, it's pretty pretty neat to be able to put a face with the picture. This is a, a, a hobby that can can go in so many different directions. There's so many different ways to enjoy it. Many amateurs like to do emergency communications and to practice their skills at setting up with battery operated radios, with solar powered radios, so that in the event of a national, national disaster or a local uh, weather emergency, a tornado where communications are disrupted, ham radio operators in their two-way gear can provide that much needed uh, communications between first responders and hospitals and uh, people who need, uh, need help. Uh, it's a it's you know it's a pretty big part of the hobby is uh, keeping your skills sharp so that when everything goes down you have a way of communicating so that's one aspect and then there's that digital mode there's what they just call plain old rag chewing which is just visiting talking with other people on the uh, on the uh, on the radio and that's what uh, is going on right now on many of these bands. Uh, ham radio has had a big resurgence in the past few years. More and more people are, are getting into the hobby. And I don't know if that's um, because they've had uh, a lot of time to be at home because of COVID. You know, a lot of people working from home and they're looking for a hobby because it's the perfect hobby if you're going to be home. Or if it is just that um, uh, it's a hunger that people have uh, in this age of alienation to just communicate and make friends with people all over the world. There are lots of contests. They call it radio sport. And I have awards up on my wall up there of uh, talking to every single state in the United States, of talking to every ham radio operators on every single continent, and uh, an award called the DXCC, which is an award you get for talking to uh, ham radio operators in over a hundred different countries. Uh, there are ham radio guys who beam, who, who bounce 
they beam a signal up to the moon, bounce it off the moon to another part of the Earth. You know, here's the Earth. They may be over here and they'll shoot it to the moon and then it'll bounce down on the other side of the Earth and they'll do communications that way. Uh, the space shuttle uh, that takes our astronauts up, all those guys are ham radio operators. Uh, most of them on that uh, space, uh, uh, the space station that's been orbiting, they always have a ham radio operator and he's talking to kids in schools all over the country by ham radio. So many ways to enjoy this hobby. Just the fun of tinkering and, and making... Uh, communications by using radio signals instead of the internet. The internet can face can interface in with it, but I don't I don't need any internet to talk to people all over the world with that. Here's something else that's really cool about this. Suppose I was taking a hike out in the woods, and I got uh, somehow mixed up and ended up being lost and not knowing where the RV is. Well, with this handy talkie and a service it has, I can actually draw a plot that points directly back to the RV, tells me how far it is from where I'm at now, and uh, just uh, sends me on a straight line. All I gotta do is follow the compass. Conversely, back in the RV, say I was hurt and was out there somewhere in the woods and I couldn't transmit, well, the mobile unit in my RV will do the same thing. It will point directly to where I am out in the woods. One more thing, using something called the automatic packet reporting system, I can generate a map of my travels in my RV that will display in real time on a computer screen and can be shared with friends or family so somebody will always know where I am. And with all the boondocking that Jennifer and I do, that provides real peace of mind. Well, this isn't ham radio that we're talking on now. It's uh, StreamYard. It's another service. This is what we use to do a lot of our uh, podcast interviews. But uh, I wanted to bring on a friend of mine, uh, WHPSK, Lauren Phillips. And Lauren, uh, we've done a couple of stories on you before, but Lauren is an RVer. Uh, how many miles have you put on that road trek of yours now, Lauren? Uh, 344,000. And uh, much of it? Uh, with ham radio and uh, I thought uh, I know of no one better to talk about how ham radio amateur radio is such a great hobby for RVers than W8PSK Lauren Phillips. It's another backup for communications because there's places around the country you don't have cell service and it kind of fills in some slow periods of activity if you're on a RV park or just sitting out in the boondock someplace you can uh, uh, do something besides twiddle your thumbs. Why don't you give everybody an idea what you, how you use amateur radio and uh, why other RVers should uh, do the same thing? Well, I travel solo now since I lost my wife eight years ago. So what I've got in there is uh, uh, a 500-watt uh, amp uh, for my uh, HF and an auto tuner. And then I drive that with a little... Uh, ICOM 706 Mark II, and uh, that worked really well. And then I got two of the UHF, VHF, uh, Yezu uh, uh, 400s in there. How hard is it for uh, an RVer to get into amateur radio? Oh, it's not hard at all. Uh, one thing you have to consider is whether the uh, wife will tolerate it. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to have any comment at all on that. Yeah. <laughs> and if she does, fine. If she doesn't, then you got to drop back and punt. But um, since I travel solo, that's not an issue with me. Amateur radio really is a great hobby. And Mike has been into this since he was, I think, 10 or 12. And it makes a lot of noise when we're going down the road. So he's considerate to me, and we don't have it on all the time. Once in a while, fine. Or at home, he goes to his place, or sometimes he goes to his office and turns it on. But in the vehicle all the time, it is not on because it's a little bit loud to me. But it is a good hobby worth pursuing. And in times that you need to reach out to somebody in an emergency, it is an awesome thing to have. Kilo 8 Z Romeo Hotel. Kilo 8 Z Romeo Hotel. Here is November 5, Victor Sierra Kilo. That's my friend Ed from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's about four or 500 miles from me right now. I'm in Florida and uh, that's uh, Ed Call Me. It's part of our 
RV Lifestyle Facebook supporters group, our RV Lifestyle group on Facebook. So uh, let's uh, let's talk to Ed and see what he has to say. Hey, November 5, Victor Sierra Kilo. Hello, Ed. How is everything in Baton Rouge, Louisiana? Good afternoon, Mike. Everything is just nice over here today. It's kind of overcast and uh, about 76 degrees. And we're waiting for a front to move through. <laughs> supposed to have some kind of rough weather later tonight, but we'll see. So, Ed, we're doing this video uh, with uh, a bunch of our YouTubers in mind who will be watching a demonstration of how amateur radio works. Uh, tell everybody how you use ham radio in your RV. Oh, hey, sure. Be glad to. Uh, I use it in uh, checking up on traffic conditions and things like that. Uh, Say in contact with friends. Uh, down here in South Louisiana, we have a, a network of repeaters that uh, go from actually the, the Mississippi uh, state line all the way to Texas. And uh, I can stay in contact with folks, even using a walkie-talkie that way. Um, I also do some public service work from time to time when we have uh, hurricanes and freezes and power outages and things like that. So use it for that and then in for staying in contact with family and friends. And tell us what kind of an RV you travel in. I have a 2000 Road Trek and a model is called the 200 Popular. All right. I hope there wasn't too much geek speak in this video. But as you can see, ham radio has a lot of uses in the RV world and it's a lot of fun to have. It's just a great hobby that's a perfect complement to exploring this nation and making friends. If you're interested in it, the best way to learn more about ham radio is through the American Radio Relay League. I'll put their address on the screen below and in the description. But contact them, go to their website, and you can learn all that is involved in licensing and all the many aspects and different ways that you can use ham radio. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope uh, you'll give us a thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. And when you do that, click the little bell icon and then you'll be notified when we have new videos online. Thanks so much for watching and happy trails and 73.